There's never a dull day at West Ham, is there? Especially in the summer. There's never, ever a day that goes by without nonsense, drama and crap in the media. And who's to blame for this? It's Gold Sullivan and Brady of all people. Oh, you know, no surprise really. They're always stirring up the pot, doing stupid stuff and just making absolute idiots of themselves. And the club is becoming a whole sham because of them. Well, guess what? In this off the press, they're going to be featuring not just once, but twice. And if you're featuring twice in off the press, it must be pretty special, right? Well, this is pretty special for the wrong reasons. Welcome to the circus that is West Ham United. It wouldn't really be a West Ham summer transfer window if the following things didn't happen. Pia Aronautovic linked with a return to the club. There's stories about Declan Rice leaving. And as is the case with this episode of Off the Press... A takeover bid being reported in the news. You know what? I've got so much to say about all these takeover rumours. As much as every West Ham wants it to happen and wants GSB to sell the club, the reality is it might not actually happen for another two years. Although something that happens recently might suggest that something could happen sooner. But with these owners, you never know. And the sooner they're gone, the better. And the day they do leave West Ham is going to be a joyful day for West Ham fans. It's going to be an amazing day. Because the club will finally get back to normality and actually become deservedly successful again. So I'm going to be talking about the failed takeover bid that was reported in the media. Something does not happen with Vladimir Sofal's contract. And I'm finishing off with a positive which is about David Moyes and his opinions on the youth team. As far as I understand it, these bidders that were supposedly behind this rumoured takeover actually began the negotiations in February. A formal offer wasn't submitted, um, and it wasn't completely finalised, so it wasn't really there to be turned down. I'm just basing this off of what ex-West Ham United employees said. Um, it's at the time that David Sullivan would consider the bid as Sullivan himself was open to investors. And since this has been reported, it has been said that David Gold and David Sullivan will cut up to 40% of their shares within the club. Uh, that to me has a plus and a minus. It suggests that West Ham could be in some financial trouble and that uh, the full extent of our supposed financial problems and debts aren't being reported clearly or truthfully. It also opens up investment for other people to come in, which is good, but it doesn't mean that any investor that comes in is going to still be majority shareholder. That's going to be Sullivan, because he's got the 50% still. Um, What I will say is that the takeover rumours always happen every summer. It's happened for the last two or three years, saying that um, someone's going to come and buy the club. The person who was rumoured to want to buy the club, I think, was a former uh, member of the board at QPR. He could have even been the chairman. I think his name's Philip Beard. Um, And he was behind this investment group. What I do think of these takeover rumours are they are there just to divert from the fact that no signings have been made. Or just to get the fans' attention diverted away from all of the problems going on at the club at the moment. And we get excited when we hear TakeOver News West Ham fans. I see it on Twitter, all the reactions, everyone's going, oh, TakeOver! But it never happens. It's not going to happen, really, for another two years. 2023 is, I think, the earliest time that these owners can actually leave and sell the club. But if they're willing to cut their shares, they could be wanting to do it sooner. And... The thing is, they should really sell the club, just for the benefit of the club's future. Just be honest with the fans. The honest thing David Sullivan can do is just to come out and say, I'm not the right man for this club, I can't invest money, I don't know how to do this, and leave. And you know what, if he does do that, I will say to him, 
fair play on you. That's the most honest and truthful and respectful thing that you have said about yourself. It would be the best thing for the club, like I say. It would be no more penny pinching. We'd actually have some real investment in the club. The club would get good training facilities and good um, practice rooms and a decent training ground instead of the port cabins. The squad would be young and world class as Karen Brady promised five years ago. And there'd be no more lies, worries, broken promises and stress. Because these owners make us West Ham fans edgy. They make us all upset, worried about the direction of the club, because there, well, there is no direction at the club anyway, so what even is the point of me saying that? And the future of the club with them. Because we've got an increase in debt right now at the club. They're just debts, debts. We're meant to be the 18th richest club in the world with Sullivan as a billionaire, yet he doesn't spend money. And any cash that we do make off of transfers, which are never for profit... Ends up going into his pocket, we never see it again. If we want to be a successful club, we need to look at Leicester, Everton and Aston Villa. And even play, you know, even clubs like Southampton and Norwich. Look at their scouting systems. Look at how they wheel and deal with players. Look at how they're set up. They want to build a young, competitive team. We don't. We've got an ageing team with massive wage bills and loads of players who are out of contract within the next two years. So that's another thing. These owners don't have depth. And the reason why these takeover bids are needed is to get the owners out. But just to get back on track to what I said, it happens every, every summer. Without fail, you can guarantee that there's going to be news about a takeover bid at West Ham. A possible takeover. The club's worth £600 million or something like that. Well, I want to get my hopes up about it, but I can't at the same time. David Sullivan actually then came out in a statement... And said, um, oh, I don't want to sell it to someone who doesn't really know how to run the club. Pot kettle black. <laughs> Are you mad? You can talk about yourself, David. You're absolutely burning the club to the ground. You tarnished it beyond repair. You destroyed the legacy of West Ham. And we're sick to death of these owners. The sooner they're out of the club, the better. Next time I hear a story about a takeover, I want it to be real. And as soon as we get GSB out the better it will be for West Ham and we can rejoice again. The owners also know how to piss players off. I mean, they've pissed Declan Rice off and he's thinking of jumping ship. And now they've pissed off Vladimir Sofal because apparently they've offered him a really low contract. Bit different to Declan Rice won this because I understand that Sofal and his representatives aren't happy with the deal and they won't be because they've probably been offered less than what they sh should be getting. But so far, has got two years left on his contract. He is 28 years old. And he's not on a very high wage in the first place. I think he's only earning about a million a year anyway. Which is small compared to what some of our other players are getting. Um, him being offered a very lucrative contract is concerning. The fact that he, we, the owners have managed to piss him off is another thing. Because that's two fan favourites now that the owners have managed to annoy through bad contracts. Just pay them the money. Actually, no, you can't, you can't, they can't fix it. They can't fix it. Because some of these players have got West Ham sussed out. And if Declan Rice leaves this club, or should I say when he leaves this club... He's probably going to come out in the media and say what he really thinks about the owners. And about other former players who have been sold on the cheap over the last five or six years or so are going to come out and say the exact same things as well about these owners, how bad they were with contracts and money. Even Paolo Di Canio said, I couldn't work for one day with David Sullivan. So I don't think so far is happy right now about being offered a really poor contract. Although it is different to Declan Rice's situation, it doesn't change the fact that these owners still don't know how to run a club. Bad contracts is another example of this. Are they offering petty money? Doesn't make any sense. They're just... I don't know. Just... GSP do me heading. That's all I'm going to say. And if I keep talking about it, this video is going to just stretch on and I'll be here till, um, what, early hours of the morning talking about it. So let me just... 
cut off away from the fact that the owners have annoyed me. But basically, they've offered Sofal a really poor new contract extension. He said no, and he's not happy about it. Make that two players that are pissed off. Soon the whole squad's going to be pissed off and start jumping ship. Nice one, owners. Nice one. It's not all doom and gloom, though. I have got something nice and something positive to talk about in this video. I am going to do another video about this, maybe sometime this week, but let me just touch base on it to begin with and give you a brief overview. So David Moyes has been watching the team in pre-season, and there have been times where the under-23s have been playing friendly games as well, and he's been keeping note of the players in those games. A lot of youth players and a lot of the newcomers to the youth team in the under-23s have been playing in pre-season, notably in the 6-2 win over Celtic at Celtic Park. Players such as Pierre Aqua, Armstrong Akeo Flex played in those games, even Frederick Alves did as well, and have made a really big impression in the team. Uh, Frederick Alves has impressed me, I think he looks like a very solid defender. Okeo Flex looks decent on the wing. Uh, Thierry Nevers bagged a hat-trick against Southend United and scored... Uh, Monday. So he's looking really good. I think some of these youth players could be ready for the first team. And David Moyes has praised them and he wants to use them as part of his Red Bull model. He says he wants to create the Red Bull model at West Ham, which is using young players from the academy and building them up. I'm not saying that West Ham don't have to sign players because they've got a good academy. West Ham do need to sign experienced players for the team. They have to spend money still. That's without a shadow of a doubt. But what I am saying is these young players are coming through quite nicely. And David Moyes is going to bat them and give them chances. He did it in the FA Cup last season with players such as Dapo Afalai, who's since moved to Bolton, Jamal Baptiste and Nathan Trott. And Trott's gone out on loan to a club in France. But the academy is progressing nicely. And that's what attracts a lot of players to West Ham's academy is the ability for them to grow and develop there under the coaching system and the recruitment in the academy. And that's one thing that is good about the club, is the academy. David Moyes takes note of the under-23s, and I can see some of them playing in the first team next season. We've got four competitions, I don't see why not. Uh, really impressed with a lot of them in the pre-season, especially Thierry Nevers and Okeo Flex. And um, you never know unless you play them. So David Moyes is right to praise the academy, and this Red Bull model, I'm all for it. Thank you very much for watching this off the press. It was quite negative and very one-sided about the board, but they've been making headlines all week and all summer, so what more do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Sugarcoat it? Nah. That's not how we do things on From the Anvil. I just say it as it is. But thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all soon. Oh, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content. See you all soon.